بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين والأخيار من صحابته المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإيمان وإحسان إلى يوم الدين My dear brothers and sisters Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May the peace and the blessings of Allah be upon you and with you and surrounding you all the times what is the view of Shia Islam on the companions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his progeny? The issue of the companions or the Sahaba of the Prophet is one of the critical issues that has been discussed for a long time among the Muslims and the schools of thought in Islam. The Sahabi or a companion has been defined as the person who either saw the Prophet or heard the Prophet speaking or conversed with the Prophet even for a short period of time. Even if that was for a few minutes, then he is going to be called a companion, Sahaba or Sahabi or Sahabiyya for the female. And some schools of thought in Islam, mainly the one that subscribes to the companions and the, to the Khulafa, Caliphs, believe that once a person becomes a companion and he obtains this title, automatically he is going to receive immunity against any criticism and he is going to be considered a holy person almost immaculate and we should only praise them and commend them even though if we think that they did something wrong or they violated the Islamic rules or they harassed the Prophet peace be upon him we have no right to criticize any one of them. Just because they saw the Prophet and they heard him for a few minutes, they would, we, we have to assume that, that they are good people, noble people, and they're going to uh, leave it to God to decide about their fate. But we learn something else in Islam from the Holy Quran. Islam teaches us that a person no person should be praised or condemned without a valid reason. Regardless of his or her religion or belief or race or, or, or ideology. Therefore, according to the Holy Quran, the nearest people to God and his apostle and his prophet are those who are the most pious in Surah Al-Hujurat in Akramakum in Dallahi Atqakum in chapter 49 verse 13 Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu in Akramakum in Dallahi Atqakum Indeed, the most honorable among you in the sight of God are those who are the most pious so Islam teaches us that we must judge people according to their piety, not according to their blood relationship, not according to their family tree, not according to their social status, not according to their wealth, not according to their tribe, not according to their, you know, uh, college certificate or degree only according to their own piety and righteousness and religiosity and commitment to faith and to God. And therefore, what do we think about the Sahaba of the Prophet, the companions of the Prophet? Our belief, the belief of Shia Islam is exactly the belief of the Holy Quran. Our belief matches the belief of the Holy Quran. No more, no less. We say 
about the Sahaba exactly what the Quran said about them. Now, if you examine the Holy Quran, you would find there are verses that praise the Sahaba. There are verses that gives them that give them a credit and a credibility and commend them. And those Sahaba are the one who stood with the Prophet, who sacrificed, who gave their wealth, who gave their time, who gave their soul and their life and their blood to protect Islam, to defend Islam. And those were the most obedient to Prophet Muhammad. Few examples of them, Ammar ibn Yasir, who was tortured and his parents were persecuted and tortured by Quraysh, by Abu Sufyan in Mecca, but he did not give up on Islam. He remained loyal to the Prophet. One of them is Salman al-Farisi, and the Prophet changed his name to Salman al-Muhammadi, Salman minna ahl al-Bayt. He said he is one of us. One of those great companions is Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, another Sahib Rasulullah, one of the loyal friends and companions and disciples and students of the Prophet. And there are others. One of them is Ali ibn Abi Talib. One of them is Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari. One of them is Abdullah ibn Abbas. One of them is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Those are the great companions of the Prophet who always were with him, surrounded him. The Quran uh, praises them. Some of them are Al-Badriyun. Al-Badriyun, those who uh, participated in the Battle of Badr. And some of them became martyrs in the Battle of Badr. Some of them became martyrs in the Battle of Uhud. Almost 70 of the Muslims became, more than 70 Muslims, became martyrs in the Battle of Uhud. Al-Badriyun, Al-Uhudiyun, where the Quran praises them and exalts them. They gave their life. They were fully committed to the Prophet. On the other hand, there were another group of the companions, among the companions, with the companions. They were praying behind the Prophet, walking with the Prophet, but the Holy Quran says those were the hypocrites. So the Holy Quran divides the companions of the Prophet into two groups. The first group are the loyal ones, the sincere ones, the very dedicated, the very pious, the very selfless people. Listen to what the Quran says about some of them. In Surah At-Tawbah, verse 20, الذين آمنوا وهاجروا وجاهدوا في سبيل الله بأموالهم وأنفسهم أعظم درجة عند الله وأولئك هم الفائزون. Those who, those who believed in the Prophet, those وهاجروا and migrated with the Prophet, they left their properties, their homes in مكة. وجاهدوا they struggled, they gave their life their wealth for the cause of God. With their money, with their souls, they have greater degree, greater degree of nearness to God and to the apostle of God. Indeed, those are the successful ones. Some of those were females, not only males. Ummu Amara, Nasibatul Ka'biya, in the battle of Uhud, she had four children fighting in the battle of Uhud, defending Islam. Fighting alongside the Prophet, peace be upon him. And she came as a nurse. One of them was wounded, she was tending to him. But one, the rest of the companions ran away from the Prophet, according to the Holy Quran, in chapter 3, Surah Al-Imran, إِذْ تُصْعِدُونَ وَلَا تَلْوُونَ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ وَالرَّسُولُ يَدْعُوكُمْ فِي أُخْرَاكُمْ once you started climbing the mountain and you did not turn back to see what happened to the Prophet while the Prophet was calling upon you that to stand, don't go, stop, we need your help. But you did not even turn your head back to listen to the Prophet. And on that day, those who were around the Prophet, such as Abu Bakr ibn Abi Quhafa, Umar ibn al-Khattab, 
عثمان بن عفان أبو عبيدة بن الجراح سعد بن أبي وقاص Those people who were around the Prophet they ran away from him Only six or seven people stood with the Prophet The first one was Ali ibn Abi Talib Az Zubair ibn al-Awwam also was among those who stood with the Prophet on that day And this lady Nasiba she was fighting she carried the sword when she saw the companions of the Prophet run away from him she decided that I have to defend the life of the Prophet the Prophet had been severely wounded on that day the Battle of Uhud so she decided to give her life not only her time and on the one hand she had to tend to her wounded children on the other hand she had to carry the sword and defend the Prophet the life of the Prophet against the aggression of Quraysh the Prophet turned to her and said to her وَمَنْ يُطِيقْ مَا تُطِيقِينَ يَا أُمَّ عَمَارَ Who can bear what you are bearing? Oh, the great mother, the great wife, the great woman, oh, Umm Amara. So among them was also, were also some women. On the other hand, if we read two chapters in the Holy Quran, two critical chapters in the Holy Quran, we would discover firsthand from the Quran itself that what the second group of the companions did to the Prophet. And those group, this group was called the hypocrites, Al-Munafiqun. In chapter 9, Surah At-Tawbah, and in chapter 63, Surah Al-Munafiqun. We have a whole chapter named after them. And I advise those people who'd like to know something about the life of the Prophet and the surroundings and the community and the affairs and the relationships between the Prophet and the companions to read these two chapters thoroughly and focus on them. Chapter number 9 which is named The Repentance and chapter number 63 which is named The Hypocrites al munafiqun And you can see for instance as an example in Surah al munafiqun the Holy Quran <clears throat> teaches that people should not be judged by their physical appearance, not even by their public actions, because sometimes they do something that appears to me and you is good and noble and righteous, but in fact, they are not sincere. They are hypocrites. They are not doing this for the sake of God. They are doing this for the sake of popularity. For the sake of the Satan, they have no dedication and sincerity to God. And therefore, the Holy Quran says, And when you, when you, when you look at them, وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ تُعْجِبُكَ أَجْسَامُهُمْ Their bodies please you. And when you speak, when they speak, you listen to their words. تُعْجِبُكَ, أس, uh, تعجبك أَجْسَامُهُمْ وَإِنْ يَقُولُوا تَسْمَعْ لِقَوْلِهِمْ because they speak so nicely. They appear so nicely and they speak so nicely. They are as blocks of wood propped up. They think that every cry is against them because they know they are doing wrong. So when they listen any cry in the community, they think that this is against them. They are the enemies. So beware of them. May Allah curse them. How are they denying the right path? These are the disobedient whom Allah will not forgive on the day of judgment. It is equal for them whether you, Prophet Muhammad, ask forgiveness for them or do not ask forgiveness for them. Allah will not. Whether you ask forgiveness for them or you don't, Allah would never forgive them. Verily, Allah guides not the people who are rebellious and disobedient to him. So, in another verse, in another verse, and nothing prevents their contributions from being accepted except that they disbelieved in Allah and in his messenger and that they came to prayers only in a lazy state 
وما منعهم أن تقبل صدقاتهم. This is the translation of this verse. And that they only, they only offer contribution unwillingly. So they would come to the prayers, but their intention is not to pray, not to establish connection with God. They might give charity and alms and zakat, but they are not sincere. It's just a show off. So here, listen, the Quran is saying that some of them, they practiced Islam. Not that they did not practice. They did practice Islam. They did practice the five daily prayers. They gave charity, but God is not going to forgive them because they were not sincere. Their actions were not pure. In another verse, God says to the Prophet, while you are standing and talking to them, and there is a merchandise or a caravan of merchandise entering Medina, and there were drums being beaten, they leave you. وَإِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوًا انفضوا إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا While you are standing on the pulpit, you are preaching to them. You are addressing them, all of a sudden they stand, they leave you. وَإِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوًا انفضوا إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا قُلْ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ مِنَ اللَّهْوِ وَمِنَ التِّجَارَةِ Say to them, what is reserved with God is much better than this entertainment and amusement and merchandise. So this is some of the examples. In another verse, لَقَدْ ابْتَغَوُ الْفِتْنَةَ لَكَ وَقَلَّبُ لَكَ الْأُمُورِ لَقَدْ ابْتَغَوُ الْفِتْنَةَ وَقَلَّبُ لَكَ الْأُمُورِ Verily, they had a bl plotted sedition before and had upset matters for you until the truth and the victory came and the decree of God became manifest though they hate it. And this is again in Surah at tawbah verse 48. I really advise you, my friends, to reflect on chapter number 9 and chapter 63 to find out for yourself the reality of some, though, uh, some of those who surrounded the Prophet were with the Prophet in the same city, in the same neighborhood, in the same mosque, but they departed from him in matters of faith and matters of Islam. Some of the descriptions of the hypocrites has been mentioned in chapter 63, verse 8. They say, if we return to Medina indeed, the more honorable the chief of the hypocrites said that, will surely expel the abased, meaning Allah's messenger and his true followers. But honor, power, and glory belong to Allah and his messenger and the believers, but the hypocrites know not. This is some of these ac their actions. They tried to cause disunity and division and weakness among the community of the Muslims who are around the Prophet. Some of our work also mentioned in chapter 9, Surah At-Tawbah, verse 107, the story of building the mosque for just jealousy and rivalry. And therefore God says to the Prophet, لا تقم فيه أبدا. Never go to that mosque. They came to him and they said, O oh Prophet, we want you to inaugurate this mosque for us. We want you to come and lead the prayers inside this mosque. The Prophet, God said to him, don't go to that mosque. لا تقم فيه أبدا. Stay in the mosque that was based on piety and righteousness. لمسجد أسس على التقوى من أول يوم أحق أن تقوم فيه. So note that the hypocrites went to this extent of building not a nightclub, not a discotheque, but they decided to build a mosque and they invited the Prophet to inaugurate that mosque. But God said this mosque is the center of hypocrisy, division, disunity, dissension, and it has to be demolished. And God ordered the Prophet to destroy the mosque and make it a place where people go and dump their trash in that place. This is part of their stories. And then one of the things that they did, 
the hypocrites around the Prophet, they plotted to kill the Prophet when he was coming from one of his military excursion back to Medina. And some of these names are mentioned in the history of Islam and you're going to be surprised when you know some of these names who participated in the plot to kill the Prophet. Some of those names were so close physically to the Prophet, but not spiritually. They were around him for almost 22, 23 years. They were with the Prophet, but yet they decided to get rid of him and assassinate him. And this story is mentioned by uh, many credible uh, history researchers, historians, and transmitters of the Hadith. And God says to the Prophet in Surah at tawbah وَمِمَّنْ حَوْلَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ Of course, verse number 100 praises those who were loyal to the Prophet and they remained steadfast. وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ Those, the early, the pioneers, من المهاجرين among not all the muhajirin من المهاجرين among the immigrants and among the helpers the ansar من المهاجرين والانصار والذين اتبعوهم باحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه those people who were sincere اتبعوهم باحسان رضي الله عنهم god is happy and satisfied with them and they are happy with their lord واعد لهم جنات تجري تحتها then on the other hand, there are those who are who made the fifth column in Medina. Hypocrites. Some of them the Prophet recognized and some of them he did not recognize. Some of those who live in the desert, the Bedouins. Munafiqun. They are hypocrites. Wamin Ahlil Medina. And some of them, they live among you in the city of Medina. Not only those who are in the desert, in the city of Medina. Maradu ala difaq. They are veteran and expert, and experts and experienced, mired in hypocrisy. Maradu ala nifaq. La ta'lamuhum. O Prophet, even you don't know them. Nahnu na'lamuhum. We know them very well. Sanu'adhibuhum marratain, thumma yuradduna ila adabin azim. We will punish them twice. And again, they will see the final torment on the Day of Judgment. And then, of course, on the other hand, among the companions, Some of them, they mixed good deeds with bad deeds, and they confessed. They said, we are sorry, and we go back to God, and we go back to his prophet. Maybe God would forgive them eventually. يَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ So the Quran is telling us that the companions are two groups, not only one group. Not all of them are purified. Not all of them are immaculate. Not all of them were sincere. Not all of them were dedicated. Many of them were hypocrites. Some of them the Prophet recognized and he declared their names. Some of them the Prophet did not even recognize and their names were not declared. And they were living according to the Quran. Women Ahlil Medina, among you, not in the desert. Many, even many Muslims, they did not know about them. And then here we realize that those people, the Quran says, some of them they plotted to kill the Prophet during his lifetime. Some of them chose to disobey the Prophet and his commands and his orders. And some of them, they turned on their heels according to the Holy Quran in chapter 3, Surah Al-Imran. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ أَفَإِنْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلًا قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَضُرَّ اللَّهَ الشَّيْئَةِ وَسَيَجْزِ اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ You are not going to hurt God. If you turn back on your heels, God is going to reward those who are steadfast, those who remain on the path of the Prophet and the true Sunnah of the Prophet. Some of those companions, they claim that they are following the Prophet. But when it came to dunya, when it came to their political ambitions, 
when it came to their the lower interest of this dunya they gave a preference to the dunya over the akhirah minkum man yuridu dunya wa minkum man yuridu akhirah they gave a preference to the dunya and they turned away from the prophet and from his path and the true path of islam this is in nutshell the view of shia islam on the companions of prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam